Happy Monday! How's it going, guys? So, episode two, we made it. Boom. Another Monday, another show. Hope you're doing good. Hope your weekend was good. Hope your day is starting well. You too can uh, wake up with coffee in a uh, Zia Drifter mug. You can actually buy these. I'll put a link in the thing below. I don't make any money off it, I just make it because they're fun, so you can get one too. Cheers. Big thank you for everyone who's uh, checked out the videos and subscribed and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty crazy, like we're up to over 2,000 subscribers. The video's been viewed, the first one anyway, uh, over 1,400 times, which is amazing. Totally nuts. So, so far, so good, you know? So that's cool. So it's, it's fun for me to do these things, so hopefully people will continue enjoying them, such as yourself. Um, and uh, I will uh, try really hard to keep this up on a, on a weekly um, basis because it's fun to do and it's a nice kind of log of you know my development kind of journey which is cool so anyway there you go so without further ado let's get in the first section boosh so what have I been reading recently well I have something here from Hardcore Gaming 101 presents. Um, this is the Shoot 'em Ups book. They're really nice. They're really the full color, really cool images and stuff inside, and it covers you know all the kind of classic Shoot 'em Ups. Um, you know, R-Type, Radius, the rest of it, all the good stuff. So anyway, so it's a good guide to that. So it's they're really nice. Um, and this is all nice and shiny and colorful, which is really cool. Look at that cool imagery. We get a nice shot of that. I got the R-Type ship up there. Really nice. And then some of the other stuff. Um, I'll put that over here, I guess. Mm -hmm -hmm. I've actually got from them. This is Tato Arcade Classics. So again, it's just a similar kind of format. Really cool kind of screenshots and write-ups um, of games and stuff really worth checking out. I'll put the link down below where you can check out some of the stuff. This is a really nice one. Sega Arcade Classics and the covers are always so cool. This is actually pretty thick. Pretty thicker than the other ones. But you've got some really cool really nice imagery as far as the screenshots. I, you know I love pixel art as you probably know so I love seeing just big juicy pixel art images even though that's a 3D one there, but whatever! Um, and the write-ups were really nice as well on uh, each of the games. Really cool. Really cool. And then I have another one which is uh, focused on uh, Castlevania. Um, which is really neat as well. So it has a lot of character art. And it goes from, you know, the early 8-bit stuff 16-bit stuff all the way through to the more modern ones um, but I definitely lean towards the 2D stuff faux show um, I really like um, the GBA one circle of the moon I really enjoyed that the artwork is maybe not the best but um, you know in the series I mean but uh, I love the gameplay Anyway, so there you go, so that's what I'll be reading. I actually have been playing a little bit of um, Mercenaries Saga 3. I just literally last night started to play and I get that. I like the first, well, the first one, which is called Mercenaries 2. It's called number two because it's a port, I think, of on the 3DS, it's a port of the iOS version to the 3DS. So it's the same game, but they called it Mercenaries Saga 2, even though it's not, but it is. Anyway. Mercenary Saga 3 is now out on the eShop as well. I started playing that last night. It's really cool. It's like a Final Fantasy Tactics kind of thing. You should check it out. It's like three bucks or something crazy. It's so cheap. Uh, the oh, the pixel art is really nice. Um, yeah, it's good. It's nice turn-based um, action. It's really cool. So anyways, that's enough of that. And now on to the next section. Boom. Okay, so uh, what's in the news? What's in the news? Um, something I forgot to mention last week is that I did a really cool podcast with Sean Capri, who is a fabulous gentleman uh, up in uh, Canada, but we won't hold that against him. Stop it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really fun. So anyway, so here's a quick snapshot of that wonderful uh, podcast. Very nice. 
Um, and uh, yeah, it's really fun. It's a good kind of just chat about general stuff. That's what's nice about Sean is, you know, it's just a really casual, fun, hanging out, you know, talking kind of action. So uh, definitely check that out. I also did a write-up for Nintendo Life, a reflection of last year, which um, was kind of fun, actually. It's kind of cathartic to, to... Cathartic or cathartic? Is it a D or a T? Cathartic. Cathartic. I don't know. I think it's a T. Cathartic, isn't it? I'm going to have to search that. I don't know. That's bothering me now. I need to know what it is. I'll try and search that while I continue to talk. Anyway, it was a really fun write-up. Um, it's cathartic, just in case you were you know, curious. Providing psychological relief through open expression of strong emotions causing catharsis. Anyway, that's what I experienced. I uh, wrote it up in Nintendo Life, and it's nice, you know, because you went through the whole closing of Renegade Kid, uh, Greg and I splitting off doing our own separate uh, companies, so it was an uh, interesting year, to say the least. Uh, so, you anyway, know, I'll put the link down below. So definitely check that out. Speaking of which, I actually met up with Greg uh, recently for lunch. So that was fun. So we're, we're still really good buds. We'll probably end up seeing each other more now. And then we'll be working for each other. I don't know, if, no, for no particular reason, but we've tried it. We've said, hey, let's try and meet up at least once a month just to hang out and have lunch and just talk about stuff. So uh, anyway, so that was really nice. So there is that. And like I said last week, um, the Switch details of the Switch event. So January 12th, at 10 p.m. Central, because it's being broadcast live from Japan. So for them, it's probably, I don't even know what time, in the afternoon maybe, evening, morning, different day, different universe, not sure. So January 12, 10 p.m. Central, depending on what time zone you're in, obviously that'll change, um, will be the, yeah, I don't know, some live stream of the Switch, I guess. No idea what to expect with that, so. Probably going over the games and any features that we have they haven't revealed already, so that'll be interesting. Um, and then recently they just revealed the following day on January 13th at 8:30 a.m. Central, uh, there'll be a Treehouse Live event. So that'd be really cool. Um, I've met some of the people at Treehouse Live and they're awesome, um, great crew. Because I got to do the Treehouse Live at E3. Oh, what year was that? <laughs> was that last year or the year before? I think it was. Gosh, I'm, it was, no, it was 2015, I think. I didn't go to E3 last year, did I? No, I didn't. I think it was the year before that. I don't know, I'm losing track of time. Um, anyway, really great crew. I got to hang out with them, and, and obviously we're doing Super Challenge at the time um, for the uh, the demo, kind of home, E3 at home demo event or whatever. So we were showing that off. Um, and uh, yeah, they're, really, they're a good bunch. Anyway, so that'd be fun to watch. They're really, they're really good, they're very professional, and they're just fun and easy to kind of, you know, to hang out with, which is kind of what the Treehouse Live stuff feels like. You're just hanging out with them. So that'd be fascinating to see them show off the games and stuff. So um, anyway, so that's what's in the news. Let's go on to the next section, shall we? Hmm. And actually, before we do that, we'll start off with uh, the Good Morning Blips. <laughs> Lovely. Again, not sure if that's really something you want to see, but added it anyway. So let me know. So uh, obviously working on chicken wiggle still, um, doing bug fixing, finishing stuff up, menus. Um, we didn't get to the boss last week, unfortunately. So hopefully this week we will. Um, God, we're so close. And I'm liking it a lot. Yeah. Got, I'm getting more people to play it and stuff, which is good. And they seem to like it, which is cool. Um, also been preparing some uh, PR materials, so uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but we've got some key art of the game um, created by a really awesome artist who goes under the name Anime on Twitter, um, and I'll show the image now. Boom! How cool is that? Um, anyway, we're work, continuing to work with her to do a few other key pieces of art that we'll be revealing over the coming weeks. Uh, which is fun, you know, fun kind of PR material to kind of share with you guys. So anyway, so we've been working on that, preparing that, getting all that ready together. Um, but I've also worked, well, last week I also worked on some treasure notes, uh, some of the design, what kind of design art, sometimes they go around with hand in hand, but it's the world map. Um, yes, there's a world map, and you kind of navigate it in a similar fashion to Super Mario World, kind of, sort of. 
that's the inspiration anyway. So working on that, which is interesting because design wise you have to, you know, figure out how many levels there are, what are the levels, how should they be located in connection with each other, you know, is there a secret path, you know, and blah, blah, blah. So you have to figure out the design aspect first before you can make it look nice, you know, before you actually place it down and start making it look like more than just colorful, you know, circles and boxes. Um, so that's been fun. I, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged by the results. I don't want to reveal it just yet because it's in work in progress. I'm totally looking at it right now. I'm totally looking at it. It's pretty cool. Maybe you can see the reflection on my eyeballs. Um, <laughs> but it's not, it's not finished yet. But I, I'm encouraged though. I think it, it's, it's coming together pretty cool. Um, I have like the first island I'm working on. Um, and I'm trying to make it look like the level art kind of you know but from a different overhead perspective in a different scale so that's been an interesting challenge yeah i think it's gonna work i like it anyway so we've been working on that so that's super fun as well as just general kind of design scope idea type stuff for, for, for treasure knots so it's it's really nice actually to be able to kind of it's so different it's such a different game than any of the other 2d games we've done you know with buds and zeo drifter etc so it's um yeah, no, it's fun. It's a, it's a fun kind of... It, 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 for me, I can get into a completely different mindset when I work on Treasure Nords. Um, you know, and then I work on you know, Chicken Wiggle, and they're completely different games, even though they're both 2D side scrolling games. To me, they're completely different. Um, so it's kind of fun to kind of go into a different space and, and work on that. So anyway, yeah, very cool. Um, another stuff, general update, is we have established and revealed the price of a Chicken Wiggle on the 3DS will be at $9.99. So it'll be $9.99, not $999. I don't think anyone, no, no one would buy it for $999. That'd be, that'd be too much. So uh, yeah, $9.99 um, and whatever it may be in other parts of the world in relative to that, which is always a tricky thing to figure out because the exchange rate changes all the time and doesn't matter what you do, someone's going to be unhappy with it somewhere. Um, so I think that's a good price. I think, I mean, some people uh, think it's, you know, too low uh, for what it is. Um, and that's great. <laughs> Thank you. That's very nice uh, for people to, to say that. But the reality is the market is what it is. Um, you know, it's an eShop game. So I think $10 is, is a good thing. You know, like Treasure Nauts, for example, is a bit more of a larger, epic, uh, epica? That's not a word. A larger, more epic um Kind of experience so that might might nudge more towards like the 15 or even 20 dollar range i don't know when we get there we'll figure it out but um you know like like shop and i and um steam world heist and other games that have come out in recent time that you know are larger in scope and treasure knots is more like that but but chicken wiggle was you know more of a muds kind of scope you know it has a bunch of levels 48 to be precise uh, and then it has the level uh, the level editor I'll also be making a bunch more levels that will be available online to download um, from the moment that it um, launches. So hopefully there'll be at least 60 levels officially available uh, from myself for you to enjoy um, on release day. So um, anyway, and then the thought is, what do we do with the iOS version? And um, I did put a poll out on Twitter, um, but it's always tricky, you know, you don't know um, whether it should be um, the same price, free, different, blah, whatever. Anyway, so right now we're kind of leaning towards $4.99, um, even though that doesn't make sense to lots of people. I think some people it will make perfect sense, so it depends on who you are. But I think if you buy games in that market, you'd, uh, you would see that, yeah, that seems reasonable for that market. But if you don't buy games in that market and you're a 3DS player, you'd be like, I don't get it. Why is it cheaper over there? Um, and obviously, if you if money is important, and which who is it not important to, um, and you need to save some pennies, then you can get the iOS one, which is cool. You know, I prefer the 3DS one because I like the buttons and stuff. But I do like iOS stuff, though. I like having something you know which goes with me everywhere I go. You know, my phone. I love having muds on there. I love having totes that go on the phone. You know, because I can play it anywhere, which is, I don't know, it's really neat. Um, anyway, whatever. So there you go. And now on to the final section, random waffles. Random waffles. I think I generally just kind of wanted to chat about how amazed 
I am at the reaction to this show. I really want to say thank you. That's amazing. I know I said that at the beginning of the video, but it's just amazing that, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of worrying and it's kind of difficult when you commit to doing something. Um, like, you know, I was like, well, I want to make a video, you know, should I put it in a certain format to kind of help it to be more digestible? You know, do you just release it and see how it does and then say, oh yeah, okay, well I'll do that. I'll do that weekly then. You know, or do you just come out straight away and say, all right, it's a weekly show, boom, go. Which I think helps a sense of, um, you know, reliance. You know, like if, if someone comes out and, you know, and it says, hey, it's going to be out every week, then I'm like, great. You know, if I like it, then that'd be cool. But if it's just a one-off, it's kind of hard to commit to that. So it's kind of nice, I think, you know, to be able to come out and say, boom, it's going to be weekly, which, you know, but it's worrying from my perspective to do that. But it's been nice that people seem to be interested in it. So that's cool. So it's definitely encouraging. Um, so uh, yeah, anyway, so really cool. Um, and, I, and this video actually is running a little bit long anyway. So I'm gonna cut the random waffles a little bit shorter this week because I waffled in the other sections, but not randomly. I guess there were unrandom waffles. Boosh. All right, cool. Thanks guys. Thanks again for um, checking these out. Um, definitely like, share, and subscribe. Um, and I will see you next Monday. Boom.